uh, unit number 12, uh, chapter 3, uh, draft. Now, uh, before we go into draft, uh, we are, I would like to take a look at uh, what's in the combustion gas stream. Eh? Uh, so, when you burn, burn burning fuel, eh, so you you have to have some air mixed up with the fuel eh, before you start burning. Eh? So that those one is called primary air. But once it go into the furnace and then you introduce some more air eh, and then the uh, the combustion will become heat. Eh? So and resulting in higher temperature uh, way inside the, the furnace. Eh? So that is the secondary air. Eh? Tutorial air is the air you put in there after um, you burn some of the, the carbon, uh, but the combust uh, combustion will not compete, uh, producing, producing CO2. And then you add more, some more air at the end uh, uh, to convert the C CO into CO2. Okay. Now, so the the combustion air um, a lot of time uh, because of environmental concern uh, you want to introduce uh, the burning of the fuel uh, by stages uh. so if you burn the, the all the fuels at all at once that uh, temperature would be really really high uh, and will produce the 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 NOx uh, N O X so. In order to avoid the exit rain, uh, which uh, come from NOx, uh, you want to burn a little bit of fuel first, uh, and then introduce uh, some secondary air uh, and burn it uh, another stage. Uh, uh, Sometimes you know you may have a three stage uh, furnace, uh, so that not all the fuel will burn at once, uh, so resulting in a lower temperature of the furnace uh, and no. Uh, exit rain producer okay now on this chapter we're going to take a look at the, the draft uh, so th these are the least of topic we're going to discuss today uh, so the the diff four different types of draft inside the boiler and then how to measure the 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 draft uh, uh, momentometer probably most common when we use uh, and then we will take a look at uh, uh, the the fan that created draft, uh, how to control uh, the airflow, uh, okay? Now, so draft uh, is a, just a different between uh, one, two points, okay? So if the, there is a different between the two points, uh, the air will help you will create air movement, okay? Now, so the air movement, uh, it could be really, really small, just like the, the natural draft. Uh, Okay, either you can either uh, create it so that it more than the 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 the, the, the atmospheric pressure outside the furnace, uh, or less than the atmospheric pressure outside in just outside the furnace. But you want to uh, create a little bit difference, uh, that difference it could be really, really small. Okay. But that is uh, the one that make the air move uh, inside uh, the furnace. Okay. Now, for natural draft, uh, um, we we need uh, a stack, uh, which is uh, um, just at home we call it not the stack, we call it the the, the chimney. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, so if you want uh, enough combustion, just say uh, full air inside uh, the furnace. Uh, let me know you 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 need to create a draft uh, so the draft uh, is required to uh, completely burn the fuel uh. now in our cases uh, the draft uh, is the difference between the atmospheric pressure and the static pressure inside uh, inside uh, the the furnace or the chimney uh. okay uh, a few different support uh, there is a difference between the inside and the outside and referring pressure. Now the definition of a drop loss uh, is you have anything on the path uh, of the the drop. Uh, those gas go through the go through the, the the furnace and then the stack. Uh, 
So if you have n, you put anything in there, that will reduce the the static pressure uh, and causing friction. Uh. So those one uh, is called a, a drop loss. Uh. The drop loss cannot be re recovered. Okay. Uh, lots of example. Right? It's just uh, you put the uh, uh, economizer in the in the fuel gas path, uh, and it will create some uh, drop loss. Uh. Okay. Now the, um, there are a few methods uh, to to create drop in the boiler. Uh, natural drop, force, and induce, and the balance between the force and induce. Uh, okay. Now for natural drop, that is the original form. Uh, long, long time ago, you know, when we we cook uh, with the chimney, uh, the stove, the chimney behind the stove, uh, and you. We create a movement of the air so that we can burn the the the, the fuel inside the, the furnace uh, or, or cooking stove. Uh, so that is the the natural drop without you any mechanical means. Uh. So that the create the natural drop uh, is created by, by the um, the two two column. Uh. One column is your your um, your chimney. And the column, uh, you might not be able to see it, uh, but it exists, uh, it's on the outside, okay? Outside, if you, uh, let, let me see that we have uh, the, the more monitor here, no, no? okay, let, let's see, you know, now that is a momometer. Uh, so you can see in here, one leg uh, is a chimney, and the end of the leg um, is, just say a column of air outside, uh, just say outside of uh, the boiler. You there might not be a shape of uh, uh, air. Just say you cannot see the, the column of air, but it's it's there. Uh, even they don't have any container contained. Uh, you still have the same column of air there. So and they connect together. So in our case, uh, so the your furnace way at the bottom, uh, one. Is a chimney. Another one uh, is the, the column of air outside of your boiler. Okay. Now, now uh, so the required air flow uh, for the full gas full boiler, you can just depend on the the stack alone. Uh, uh, but in this case, uh, um, you have to have a really, really high step. Uh, you know. Now, let's say, you know, if you look closer at the, a, a house, uh, their chimney uh, is always higher than the highest point of the, of the house. So that is the reason uh, they want the, there's a column of, of air there, uh, go for the chimney, uh, just say a U-band. Uh, if if you have the chimney higher than the highest point of the air, so that means you, know, you can draw a little bit more draft so that your wood stove or the the, um, the furnace, uh, natural wood burning stove furnace, uh, you have enough draft to start your your wood stove. Uh, okay. Now, so in here, this one is the chimney, uh, and you have boiler in the bottom. Uh, and in here, it's the dog that lie, uh, it, it is the column of, of cold air, okay? Now, even you don't know, do not have a, a shape there, but you know there is a column of air uh, in here, okay? Now, in, in this case, uh, uh, you have a, a furnace, uh, and you have the hot gas going up. Even you don't see it, uh, there is a column of air way on the left hand side in here and pushing down on this uh, so you can see this one uh, this path inside the, the, the boiler is the bottom of the momometer uh, the U, U2 momometer so in this case in here we have the, um, the inner damper and uh, the outer damper to control how much uh, air go through there uh, okay so you can see the, this one is just like a, a momometer this is one leg, eh? and 
there's the end of the lake, it's invincible. Huh? Just like no shape, but it's still there. We know it is there. Huh? Okay. Now the higher the chimney, huh, the higher the drop will 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 cause. Huh? Okay. Now the natural drop without any mechanical means, huh, it it depends on the the height of the chimney. Huh? The higher the chimney, the the higher the chimney, the more natural drop it uh, it produces. Huh? Now uh, the temperature inside the the, the chimney compared to outside air, huh? so the difference between the two, huh? it's also uh, can create a natural drop too. Huh? Okay. Now, we have no control of the weather outside, huh? but we we do have control of the temperature inside the, the chimney. So you're burning more, more fuel, huh? your fuel gas will be hotter, and then the drop is a whole lot better. Huh? But the problem is if you, the, the, if you have high, too high a temperature there, so that means you are not recovering all the heat you burn, right? and the heat just go out of the chimney, you lost some money. Yeah? Now, another way to create drop is the higher the chimney, yeah? but there's only so much you can do to build a high chimney. Yeah? Now, when you build it too high, yeah, the capital cost would be a lot. Yeah? So you have to do a balance between uh, how much it costs you uh, and how good the drop is, uh, so that is the situation we're facing. Uh. Now the stack, the stack, uh, you serve uh, quite a few different purposes. Uh. Now it, the first one, of course, uh, it pro, if it's a natural drop uh, a boiler, it will produce uh, the drop necessary to draw the air into the furnace, uh, and after the burner, uh, we discharge the uh, the combustion powder or the combustion, uh, the fuel gas to outer atmosphere. Okay, now, uh, so it is a uh, uh, they just deliver the powder the the combustion uh, to a higher attitude because now especially this is especially true. Uh, if you have a factory uh, inside the uh, the city, uh, if you the chimney is too too low. Uh, you just disperse this, uh, and those of few gas uh, will be stay around in your neighborhood. Uh, and people won't be uh, really happy of that. Uh. So if you get the chimney a little higher, it will fall way up to the sky and then uh, fall a bigger area. Uh. Okay. Now, so the the in the intensity of the drop are produced by the stack uh, will depend on the chimney uh, and the, the temperature uh, between the chimney and the outside air. Now, but they, they have, we have lots and lots of limitations uh, on the, the, the natural drop. Uh. Now, there's so much too you can um, do with the natural drop uh, because you want the economy, uh, so you tend to put some lots of stuff in the path of the the fuel gas uh, so let's say economize uh, this one uh, and then the air heater is another one uh, anytime you put uh, anything in there it will uh, you will lower the, uh, the excess gas temperature uh, but it also increase the friction uh, of the drop okay now so if you want to put those things in, uh, put the economizer and the heater in, uh, and your stack uh, will be really, really high, uh, it's not uh, physically or just economically uh, impractical to do this. Uh. So that is why, you know, you there is a limitation of the natural drop. You have to use a mechanical means uh, to move the air inside your, your furnace. Okay. Now that they come to the few different types of uh, mechanical means. Huh? Now the, the one of the very common one huh, is a force trap. Huh? Force trap that means uh, you you use a fan to push the 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 air huh, at the inlet of the boiler, and then when you push in, huh, the hot gas uh, will go through the stack, huh, and then will give you um, a really good flow. Huh? Okay. Now in this case, uh, if you push air in, into the uh, furnace, that means your furnace uh, 
is uh, pressurized. Huh? Pressurized. So if your furnace is pressurized, uh, you do not want the fuel gas uh, to leak out of the furnace. Uh, in case it has CO, carbon monoxide, that uh, will kill everybody. Uh. So that means every opening uh, had to be sealed really, really, really tight. Uh, or you put uh, a positive pressure in there, so that pulls the air in instead of coming out of the, the open, opening. Uh. Now, the induced uh, drop, uh, it, the fan, uh, instead of on the outside at the entrance, uh, you put a fan somewhere at the bo on the path, uh, somewhere near the chimney, the stack. Uh, so, and then uh, you draw the air out of the furnace, instead of the four drop fan, you push the air in. Uh, okay, now, so in this case, uh, when you draw the air out of the, the furnace, so that means immediately before the, the induced fan, uh, that is a negative pressure there. And of course, uh, on the discharge of the outlet of the, the induced uh, fan, uh, that is a positive pressure. Uh, okay, now, so that means uh, any opening in the boiler uh, allow air to be drawn into the furnace. Uh, now, that's a good thing is um, the CO, the carbon monoxide cannot come out. Uh, but the problem is uh, you draw some air into there. Uh, if this, this air opening uh, is after the, the, the chimney, uh, you just, you lost the drop. Uh, you, you, you lost uh, the flow of the movement of the drop. Uh, it's just uh, instead of drawing air from the inlet of the furnace to burn, uh, you just draw air somewhere near the the stack, uh, it's just a, uh, you short circuit that, uh, and they're not really efficient that way. Uh. Now, that, and come to uh, the, the most modern bigger boiler, uh, they, they use uh, the balance draft. Uh, you have the force air in uh, at the entrance, uh, and then you have the induced strap uh, near the, the stack. Uh, so, you calculate this, uh, we have a balance between the two. Uh, okay. Now the for uh, for the force draft fan, uh, the outlet you have an, a positive uh, positive uh, uh, air pressure inside the furnace, uh, and then it keep decreasing uh, to uh, within the system, uh, and by the time you reach the, the other end of the furnace, uh, it probably you don't have too much pressure already. Uh, and then uh, the induced fan uh, uh, will come into effect. Uh, so it will draw the air from the furnace. Uh, so that, that means uh, in, in here, uh, now, the forger fan, you have a positive pressure. Uh, by the time you reach the end of the furnace, uh, it will be not too much pressure already. Uh, okay? And then uh, the uh, the ID fan, uh, industrial fan, uh, will draw even more. Uh, so at the end of the furnace, uh, will be negative pressure. Uh, and then the, on the discharge of ID fan, uh, will be um, uh, positive pi uh, pressure again. Uh, so in such a way, uh, uh, you will prevent the fuel gas from uh, leaking from, from the unit outside. Uh, Okay. Because uh, at the beginning, uh, the pressure not really much, uh, and inside the furnace, uh, almost uh, almost even, uh, a little bit negative. Uh. So in this case, uh, the, if you decide it, it uh, really good, uh, and everything is balanced, uh, the air can, uh, will not come out. Uh. Okay. Now, uh, so in the bigger boiler, they they use the. Uh, uh, Use the, the balance draft. Uh. Now this is they are the pictures uh, of the three different draft. Uh. You see in the the natural draft, uh, uh, when when it go in there, uh, the when the chim the draft uh, go up the chimney, uh, you create a negative pressure inside. It is said by the by the by the furnace in here. Okay. Now uh, let's say the the induced draft. Uh, you in you will put the a fan right by the between the chimney and the the boiler. 
No, this fan does not have to be hang up on the sky. Eh? You could draw it back to the ground. Eh? So, and that you can do that too. Eh? So in this case, eh, uh, on the suction side eh, of the, the induced fan, eh, you see it's a negative pressure. Eh? On the discharge side of the, the induced fan, eh, it's a, a positive pressure. Now, if you add the uh, four draft fan in there, so in this case, uh, why you add the discharge of the, of the four draft fan is a positive pressure. Uh, so this one, somewhere in here, there is your, what we call the wind box. Uh, and, uh, and then by the time they go to the almost uh, the exit of the, the furnace, uh, so this one will be zero. Uh, and then near the end uh, will be negative pressure. So, and then the industrial fan even uh, draw it a little bit uh, more. Uh. Now, the combination uh, of the higher chimney and the fan uh, in this area, you might have a positive or negative pressure when in this area. So, in if we use the balance drop fan in there, so the the pressure uh, inside the furnace, uh, any point uh, is not really extreme. Uh. So that is uh, the goal. Uh. Okay, now, so the first line in here, you, you see this one, huh? because the drop is really, really small, huh? uh, you, we're talking about, you know, uh, one centimeter huh? uh, of water, or either positive or ne negative, huh? so it's really, really small number, just like one kPa huh? uh, equal to 10 centimeter of, of, of water, so that means, you no. Know, uh, you you're talking about you know in the inside the the in, inside the furnace uh, is only one quarter of kPa uh, inside the, the furnace. Uh. So this one is uh, a good uh, number to remember. Uh. Ten centimeter, four inch of water equal to one kPa of pressure. Uh. Okay. Now we want to know uh, the the measurement on different area of the uh, the furnace. Uh, now usually that is the least uh, is where we put all the the, the measurement in there. The wind box uh, is way after the the in the forge fan, uh, and then the furnace uh, where it burn, uh, and then economizer uh, uh, is you already out of the the boiler in the in the duct duct work already, uh, and then the air heater uh, is all moved to the base of the, the chimney already. Uh, now and then you put another measurement uh, via the stack itself too. Uh, now, so because the the measurement is so low, uh, uh, the pressure gauge will not work. Uh, so you have to uh, put the thermometer uh, or the diaphragm drop gauge. Uh, both of them uh, measure really 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 uh, small. A different in in pressure, uh, okay. Now the the thermometer, it is a, a U tube, uh, and you put some uh, a liquid inside there. Put some liquid inside there. Now in in this case, yeah, you look at the the uh, the thermometer in here. The lick with the low lower level liquid, uh, is a high side, okay. The one with the, the higher level of liquid uh, it connect to the lower side. Uh, now. So if, if this one connect to the left side is connect to the furnace uh, and the right side connect to the atmospheric um, pressure, uh, so that means in this uh, a gauge uh, is sowing a negative pressure inside the, the, the furnace. Uh, okay. Now again, that uh, is the, because the pressure in here is higher, so it pulls uh, the liquid uh, down. Uh. This side is lower, so the liquid being pulled to the other side. Uh. So that is the thermometer. Uh. Now the diaphragm drop gauge, the whole thing uh, is in here. The, the piece of diaphragm, uh, the piece of diaphragm. Uh, the pressure, the inlet, uh, the inlet uh, of, of either atmosphere, or the pressure inside the furnace, uh, pressure or vacuum inside the furnace to connect to here, and the diaphragm will have a little bit movement, uh, and uh, you need the gear to amplify the movement uh, and indicate this one in uh, e either uh, in the paper or the the stationary scale, uh, okay, 
and and you and also adjust the the zero uh, in here. So all this one on top, uh, it's just a mechanism uh, to transfer and uh, expand, uh, just enlarge the reading. That's all. Uh. So the main measurement uh, is the opening uh, be, be, uh, behind the piece of diagram. Okay. Now uh, let's take a look at the drop fan. Uh, um, so most the induced and force fan, uh, so they are the centrifugal type. Uh, so the the centrifugal type, you know, it um, you have to take a look the the bung in here. Huh? Now this is a centrifugal of all centrifugal uh, uh, fan. Huh? So this side uh, is the outlet, and the inside, uh, just the inlet, uh, is right in the middle of the fan. Huh? The fa the air will go in here and. The fan blade itself uh, is inside there in a circle, uh, in a circle, and then that is the outlet. Uh, okay, the, um, there's lots of different types of design, uh, design in here. Huh, now. So this is the, the picture of the the fan in there. Huh? Now th those fans, uh, you you just say in the summertime, I use a fan bow. Uh, those one uh, will will not create any pressure. Uh, uh, so and this type of fan uh, that can create uh, the air movement and pressure too. Uh, okay. Now, the fan we use in summer uh, to cool down ourselves, uh, those fans uh, can move lots of volume uh, but cannot create any pressure. Uh, so, and you, if you only create pressure, you have to, to use this type of fan. Uh, okay. Now, the, how much pressure you create, uh, it depends on the shape on the, of the of, of the fan, uh, you see this one, uh, all this uh, uh, thing there, that is your, the shape of the fan. Uh. Now, for the force drop fan, uh, they use a backward curve, uh, backward curve, so this is a, uh, a backward curve, uh, so that means they spin around uh, really smoothly, uh, but the, fo the, the forward curve, uh, you are pushing the air it will draw lots and lots of power from your motor. Eh? But most of the force your fan uh, and industrial fan, uh, the, the fan uh, is uh, a backward. Uh. Now you see in here, in this one on the middle there, so the, the movement of, of the wheel uh, is just like this. Uh. So that means this one uh, is a backward uh, curve, backward, uh, backward facing uh, fan. Uh. Now in, for the uh, ID fan, uh, they can move very, very low, low speed. Uh. Uh, the problem with the, the ID fan is they they ha have to handle uh, lots and lots of more volume of, of gas uh, because you know after the gas is burned, uh, the volume expands. Uh. So compared to the draft fan, uh, the four draft fan, they pull the whatever inside there, uh, it's still cold, uh, the volume, not really much. Uh. By the time it burns, uh, the in the dry fan have to handle a whole lot more volume uh, and also you know the the gas uh, uh, is really hot too uh, so that means the fan uh, on the in, induced um, ID fan uh, have to handle the the hot gas and there are lots of uh, pollution that's or something like that uh, on the outlet too uh, so they have to handle this so, so that is why uh, they always use a, a smooth very really smooth uh, uh, a, a fan blade. Uh. So this one uh, is called airfoil. Uh. Airfoil is, is really, really smooth, uh, efficient blade. Uh. Okay. Now, oh, you, if you want, you can put the, the airfoil blade on the four draft fan too. Uh. Okay. So this one is the picture uh, of the, of, of one of the, the, the fan. Uh. So this may or may not have some louver there they control how much air can go in uh. air go in here and come out that way uh. okay now so controlling the the fan input uh, you can put a damper on the inlet and you can put the damper on the outlet uh, or you can use a variable speed uh, to 
your drive your 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 drive fire now the drive fire it could be a motor it could be a steam turbine it could be internal uh, combustion engine uh, so this way uh. now let's take a look at the inlet uh, damper uh. so the inlet damper um, control the air going in uh. okay when you control going in uh, you, you see in here they make the air go uh, move in curve direction so they, uh, a little bit more turbulence uh, and the the inlet uh, air damper uh, usually you know uh, will uh, doesn't increase uh, the cost of your motor uh, okay if, if you have move a little bit turbulence uh, so even reduce the power consumption uh, okay uh, now this is another type, another type of uh, inlet uh, inlet uh, damper. So uh, this one is called variable inlet vent, uh, VIV. When you in air conditioning, uh, you said this one is VIV. Uh. Now the VIV it could be controlled by hand, uh, just like this one. Uh. It could be controlled by the the pneumatic, uh, normally control cylinder uh, to control this. Uh. So if it all all the way open. Uh, the fan will be a uh, just a ninety degree uh, to the housing, so it's all the way close. Uh, it's just an overlap each time and close off. Uh, okay. Now the our outside outlet damper, uh, this one is not very efficient, uh, because the your motor have to work so hard. Uh, but you put the out something outlet to to force the air get nowhere to go eh? so you increase it a little bit higher higher um, higher pressure eh? and you require a bigger motor to to do do that eh? okay um, so in this case eh, the outer damper eh, is not really efficient it require a bigger motor to handle the air eh? no. now uh, this is a picture of the double inlet eh? double inlet because the way the the fan the thing, eh? because the fan inlet is on the side, eh? if you only have one side air going in, the other side is closed. Eh? So that means eh, you have a chance eh, by not your fan might not be balanced. Eh? But if you have air inlet for both sides, eh? there's one side going in here, another side going there. There's more balance that way. Eh? Now you will see this type of fan. Eh? Not only on the in induced draft fan, uh, in the air cleaning air cleaning system, uh, HV uh, AC unit, uh, you will see this kind of fan too. Much balance uh, that way. Uh. Okay. okay, now um, that's a picture of the balance draft. Uh, so I draw the red arrow there. Uh, that is the direction of the 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 flow. Uh, the air go go in go in here, and then go through a, a set of damper and go up, and then the industrial fan draw it out in here. Now the so you see this thing, huh? it does oh, the air air preheater. It overlap both the just like the the fuel gas huh? and then the inlet gas. Huh? So this could be a, a wheel. Huh? Uh, we will keep turning really slowly. Uh, they pick up the heat from the, the fuel gas uh, and give it to the inlet gas. Uh, so that is one of the air heat. Uh. Now if you have an uh, uh, economizer, uh, it will be somewhere in here uh, between the air heat and uh, the bo bo boiler, just, just after the boiler outlet. Uh, okay. Uh, now let's take a look at the variable speed dry. Uh. The, the v, now, many, many years ago, uh, only the DC motor can be controlled, uh, the speed can be very uh, but as the electronics start getting better, uh, they, they found out a way, uh, if they ch change the frequency of the electricity going in, uh, they found out the fan will slow down, uh, so that is called a variable frequency dryer we have a couple of these in the in our lab you vary you vary the frequency of the electricity supply to the motor of the fan and you change the speed of the fan but they are not um, uh, linear so that means no at 60 hertz 
is 100%. Huh? At 30 hertz, you may get only 10% huh, of the speed, huh? so they are not linear. Huh? Okay. Now, another way to do it huh, is to use a magnetic coupling huh, to variable uh, to transmit the, the power, transmit the, the speed. Huh? And another way is use an internal combustion engine huh, or steam turbine. So you can control the steam turbine speed huh, by varying how much steam you supply in there so that is a, a few different way to control the, the driver uh, uh, the speed uh, okay now uh, so uh, compare with the the inlet uh, and outlet outlet uh, louver uh, so this method uh, uh, is good most economical way uh, okay no, but the uh, of course, yeah, you have the capital cost to, to buy the variable speed dryer too. Eh? Now, if you couple this variable speed dryer with the damp, uh, damper control, eh, and you can control the movement of air really, really good, eh? you fine-tune the movement uh, very, really fine. Eh? And some of, some of them are uh, situation, eh? just like in the cooling tower, you want to incorporate eh? both the variable speed dry and the louver uh, and then you can control the air movement really good uh, so the same uh, as in the in in the boiler drop too uh, for really fine fine uh, uh, drop control uh, you use both the value speed uh, and then the damper incorporate each other uh, and to control the the drop uh, okay